I'm Pierre Buchens. I'm the chair of the board of CUGH. And on behalf of the board, I would like to welcome you to this conference. Our board is truly global. We have members from all around the world, and I would like to thank them for their contribution and all the work they have done. We are global as a board because CUGH is global as an organization. Yes, we started in North America, so we still have more flags there, and we want to keep these flags in North America. But we hope that next year and the year after and the year after, the map will be full of other little flags all around the world because CUGH is a big tent where everybody can meet and exchange ideas about global health. And this is really because we share the same vision. We share the same values of social justice, equity, and eliminating discriminations around the world. And that's why the theme of this year, Eliminating Health Disparities, a time for action, is so appropriate. We're facing these health disparities all around the world, especially in the US perhaps, but everywhere. And we have to face them together in a global way and using a global approach. CUGH is uh, also truly global by trying to make our meetings and conferences much more global. And that's why we have co-hosts for our conferences. Columbia University, Stellenbosch University, and Peradenia University. And I'm very pleased now to introduce Wafa El Sadr from Columbia University, and she will be followed by Jimmy Volving from Stellenbosch. And uh, they will say a few words to welcome you on behalf of the organizing committee. So welcome to this conference and welcome to New York. Wafa. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to New York and welcome to the ninth uh, CUGH conference. Thank you very much, Pierre. Um, I'm, very, I'm thrilled to welcome you here also on behalf of Columbia University, one of the co-sponsoring universities for this conference this year. I want to first acknowledge my colleague, uh, Dr. Richard Deckelbaum, who has been instrumental in uh, working on the planning uh, for this conference. I also want to acknowledge the Executive Planning Committee for the conference and the local organizing committee uh, that worked incredibly hard to uh, craft and, uh, a conference that would be of interest to the diversity of individuals who come to the CUGH conferences. As was mentioned by Pierre, the theme of um, disparities in global health, a time for action is quite apt at this point in time uh, in particular. Uh, and we selected that theme uh, in acknowledgement of the huge disparities that exist in global health, uh, that these disparities exist between regions as well as between countries, but even within countries and between populations and within populations. So our goal and our hope is that uh, through uh, the sessions that you will attend, the plenaries, breakout sessions, and abstract presentations and posters, that you will uh, be able to see how we try to weave uh, that theme throughout all of these types, different types of sessions. We want to explore the reasons for these disparities in a deep manner, and more importantly, we want to also be able to distill a way forward intervention strategies that can hopefully overcome some of the disparities that exist today. Why is this important and why does this seem so, so apt for a CUGH? I think mainly it is because of all of you, all of us here in this room. We come together from diverse backgrounds, diverse regions, diverse disciplines. Uh, this is not a conference, as you know, for cardiologists or infectious disease specialists. It's not about heart disease or infectious disease or HIV. Um, or technology, it is a conference about global health. And the beauty of this conference is for all of us to come together uh, to really try to advance global health uh, in recognition, of course, of the importance of interdisciplinarity and working together uh, to overcome some of the um, complex issues that stand in the way of advancing global health. So welcome. 
to this conference. Welcome to New York and look forward to your participation in all aspects of the conference uh, while we're here for the next three days. Thank you. I will then introduce uh, Professor Jimmy Volnick from Stellenbosch University. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to be with you. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this ninth annual CUGH Global Health Conference on behalf of the organizing committee as well as my own institution, Stellenbosch University. Stellenbosch is honored to be co-hosting uh, this event in its centenary here together with two prestigious institutions, Columbia University here in New York City and the University of Peradeniya in Sri Lanka. So in case you don't know, I would like to tell you exactly where our institution is located. We're in Africa. No, that is not a country. Within Africa, uh, we're located in South Africa. That is a country. And within South Africa, we can be found near the southern tip in a town called Stellenbosch, situated about 50 kilometers from Cape Town in the winelands of the Western Cape. Of course, not all faculties are located in Stellenbosch. Medicine and health sciences, for example, uh, is in the northern suburbs of Cape Town itself. As mentioned earlier, Stellenbosch University is celebrating its centenary this year. 100 years of diligent and persistent effort has helped to mold our institution and cement its reputation as a leading research intensive university on the African continent and a world-class academic institution. SU today is home to 10 faculties, a vibrant and cosmopolitan community of more than 30,000 students and 3,000 staff members spread over four campuses. This centenary milestone is not only a time for celebration, it also affords the opportunity for our institution to reflect on its contribution to the injustices of the past, to apologize to many communities and individuals who were wronged by being excluded from historical privileges enjoyed by a few prior to the dawn of democracy, and to recommit itself to appropriate redress and development. With all this in mind, we have chosen the centenary slogan, Forward Together. Our vision is to be an inclusive, innovative, and future-focused institution. To this end, we are guided by three strategic priorities. Firstly, broadening access to the institution. Two, sustaining the momentum of excellence. And thirdly, enhancing our societal impact through committed visionary leadership. It is in this spirit of openness and humility that we seek to engage with you in the quest to find solutions to the challenges of global health and the glaring health disparities we see in the world today. In planning this conference, it has been an absolute joy for, Heather, for Hester Klopper and I from Stellenbosch to work with our colleagues from Columbia, the University of Peradeniya, the CUGH executive and administrative staff, as well as the CUGH membership more broadly. I hope you will agree that the program we have jointly put together looks both interesting and stimulating. I trust you will enjoy the meeting and the further interaction over the next few days. Thank you very much. And I'll hand over to Keith Martin, the Executive Director of CUGH. Thank you very much, uh, Jimmy. Good morning, everybody. 
Fantastic. Uh, who was able to come out to the uh, satellite sessions yesterday? Yeah, weren't they fantastic? For those of you who weren't there, we had over 1,000 people attending 16 satellite sessions that dealt with everything from working with our colleagues in African institutions to, to strengthening nursing uh, training to be able to deal with implementation science, the surgical deficit, maternal and child health. There was a, a dizzying array of big issues. So for those of you who came, thank you. And for hopefully for next year, when we meet again in Chicago, that you will be able to attend that day, which is not to be missed. I'd like to again uh, thank uh, the other members of the Executive Planning Committee, uh, Wafal Satter, uh, Richard Deckelbaum, Jimmy Volmek, Esther Klopper, uh, and Samat Dharmatni from Paradinia, who sadly could not make it today because of uh, urgent issues that he has to deal with in Sri Lanka. Now, this conference, like all, as you probably recognize, is a bit like the tip of an iceberg, right? What you see is the top, but beneath that is an awful lot of work. And this would not have happened without the tireless efforts of a small group of people. So I'm going to embarrass them because they wouldn't want me to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, and they're standing at the back. Uh, we've got Dalal Najjar, Karen Lam, Arissa Koyama uh, from the Secretariat. <laughs> Alberto and Melissa, are you here from Columbia University? Fantastic. Oh, the whole team is there. That's a National Geographic moment. Um, and then uh, Doris Steinbach from MSI, who works tirelessly with us uh, during the, in and around the conference time. So uh, thank you all for your incredible work. Um, uh, there's no words I can express to you in my gratitude, and our gratitude, for all of what you have done to make this a very successful time. I have a, one slide. Let's see if it works. Oh, so there it is. So I have uh, one, one slide. And as uh, was mentioned by the previous uh, chairs, this particular issue, health disparities, a time of action, we had no idea how opportune it was when we selected this over a year ago of the urgency of re re dealing with this issue. Um, on your right, you will see a picture uh, close to here, 11 miles away from here. Now, 11 miles away from here, the average uh, life expectancy is 74 years. Here, it's 85. 11 miles, 11 years. A gross health disparity. It's happening all over countries in the world, as we mentioned before. On your left is the outpatient uh, treatment room for any, a very big, old, and important teaching hospital that serves 5 million people in a particular African uh, city. Um, the conditions are really tragic. And, and our colleagues there work tirelessly to try to improve and care for people in the time of greatest need. I bring this slide up because many of our institutions have had relationships with this particular institution, as they do with others. So in many of the institutions that we're working with overseas, they're laboring under curricula that's a quarter century old, a quarter century old, where their members don't have the same access to uh, libraries and curricula and information and they don't have the equipment that they would love to get their hands on to be able to treat the people that they try to, to, to deal with. Um, so I bring that slide up just to show that in the relationships that you have with your colleagues overseas, let's find ways of working with them to be able to redress those issues. I don't know if Dr. Muller is here from the DRC. Are you here? There. So Dr. Muller is the only certified emergency room physician in the Democratic Republic of the Congo with 82 million people. He works at uh, the Heal Africa Hospital. Check, check it out if you want. They do extraordinary, extraordinary work with Dr. Lucy to deal with women who have been, uh, been uh, raped in the crisis of that tragic uh, situation. But Dr. Miller, we are honored that you are here and uh, know that your tireless work, that all of us are here to be able to do what we can to support you, so thank you. So in closing, ladies and gentlemen, um, I just want to thank you again. You've come from a short distance or from afar. We're particularly grateful for those who have come a long distance to make it here. We recognize what a sacrifice it is for you um, and know that you have a friend at CUGH. Thanks to you, we have tripled in size since we opened our doors in Washington in September 2012. 
and we continue to grow with your support and your engagement. So we look forward to continue to build on what's happened so far and move forward to deal with crises like this happening all over the world. So thank you for being here. And we have a little message, a special message from a friend of yours. Cue the uh, video, please. Ladies and gentlemen, you all know that the world is unequal. At least half of the world's population lacks access to essential health services. And every year, almost 100 million people are pushed into extreme poverty because of out-of-pocket health spending. Others face huge barriers to accessing health services based on their gender, age, ethnicity, disability, or because of stigma and discrimination. We see dramatic disparities between countries, but also within countries at all income levels. Good data is the crucial starting point for reducing health inequalities. Identifying where health inequalities exist is essential for reducing them. Through the Health Data Collaborative, WHO is working with partners to strengthen data systems around the world so that decision makers can see who is being left behind. We have also developed resources, including the Health Equity Assessment Toolkit, or HIT, to help countries uncover inequalities and track progress towards reducing them. We also need to understand the causes of inequalities. We need to understand the barriers to health services, both within and outside the health sector and ensure strong governance and accountability tools are in place to challenge them. But of course, the best data is useless if we don't act on it. Often, disparities prevail because health systems and services are designed to prioritize the needs of institutions rather than the needs of people. That's why WHO works with countries to design and deliver policies and programs that prioritize those who are falling behind and to break down the walls to progress toward this universal health coverage. Thank you for your support and partnership. Together, we can create a healthier, safer, and fairer world. I thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tedros, and much thanks to Dr. Agnes Sukat from the WHO for enabling us to have this short welcome from Dr. Tedros. Before I hand it over to our next speaker, two things happened yesterday that were uh, imp quite important. Uh, one is that there was the release of the Lancet Commission on, uh, on uh, Pathology and Diagnostics, so, which is great news. Check out the Lancet booth uh, today. If you can, you'll get information about that. And secondly, with the incredible work of the National Cancer Institute, uh, NYU Langoni, uh, with NYU Langoni uh, Medical Center here in New York, we lay down the New York Challenge. The New York Challenge is a challenge to end cervical cancer deaths. It is to make sure that every woman is going to be vaccinated, 70% of all girls are going to be vaccinated against HPV, and that every woman is going to have access to screening in her entire life, at least once. So we hope that that effort that we started yesterday with NYU Langoni uh, uh, Cancer Center, that we will together work to end this appalling preventable tragedy of nearly 300,000 women dying every year of the entirely preventable cervical cancer. So it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce Dr. Richard Deckelbaum. Dr. Deckelbaum is one of the chairs of the, uh, of the conference, and he's the head of uh, nutrition at, uh, at, uh, the male, at uh, uh, Columbia University, at Columbia University Medical School. 